Strengthening transparency, accountability, and responsiveness. That's what we call the Star Ghana Foundation. They've been key partners in ensuring that uh, the citizens are brought up to speed on the many uh, different fronts, uh, local government call, election call. Well, this morning we'll have a conversation with the executive director, uh, Mr. Tanko Ibrahim Amidu, who will uh, throw some more light on what the election call is all about. Chief, thank you very much for coming. My pleasure. Since July 2019, when this whole election call thing came to been yeah. how how has the response been like on the outside well as usual um, it's been amazing and this is not the first of um, star mm. election calls um, we provided support around the 2012 elections mm. 2016 right. and now 2020 mm. we advertised and um, had over approximately 300 applications but right. unfortunately we could only support uh, 28 okay so it was a very competitive process mm. yeah. these 28 what did you look at for example i know that you have uh, an overarching theme yeah. and then you have many different ones so what's the overarching theme first of all now we'll look at the sub themes well the overarching theme as usual has been um, contributing towards credible transparent and peaceful elections mm. And then we focus on just three thematic areas for okay. this one. Okay. So anti-vigilantism right. and peaceful elections, that's okay. one. Mm -hmm. Then inclusive elections, mm -hmm. how to ensure that every citizen okay. is able to participate effectively mm -hmm. in all processes of the elections, right. that's two. And the third one is the issue-based elections, seeing how we can focus mm -hmm. the campaigning, the conversations, around the issues that concern us as citizens. Okay, yeah. let's start from anti-vigilantism. Yes. There's been a lot of talk. I mean, uh, the National Peace Council, for example, has been trying to put the parties together to mm. to agree yeah. not to have vigilantism, mm. uh, you know, up there in the election 2020. Yeah. There have been a couple of issues that have come up. Uh, yeah. NDC says, well, uh, we need to bring all the other stakeholders on to sign yeah. so that it's not just the parties. Yeah. From the work that you're you're pushing out there yeah. to have anti-vigilantism, is this the panacea that we want to see mm. to stamp vigilantism? Okay. Well, I, th I think vigilantism is quite a complex mm. issue mm. Um, and it requires action at various levels. Okay. So we have the national level actions. Right. And um, you recall that even with, in partnership with TV3, mm -hmm. we organized a town hall meeting here mm -hmm. where we brought together key actors Absolutely. to just discuss this. Absolutely. So Absolutely. there are the national level actions and there are the local actions mm. because the local actions feed into the national and vice versa. Mm. So we have a number of projects targeting some hot spots. What are these projects, if you share a few with me? Well, um, one, we have the national level projects okay. that look at bringing, from, uh, facilitating conversations, mm -hmm. dialogue at the national mm -hmm. level around how to stop it. Uh, this, uh, we have some projects that also have these eminent citizens mm -hmm. groups mm -hmm. that can step in okay. at very critical moments to support. But we also have the look, taking the law, okay. the act, and seeing that how can we ensure that it is, it is implemented. Enforced, implemented. Okay. So those are the kinds of national level actions right. we're talking about. Right. And then at the local level, we then have working with local stakeholders, mm -hmm. traditional leaders, faith-based organizations, youth leaders, to ensure that the elections are peaceful, okay. even at those local mm -hmm. levels. So we are um, adopting a twin track approach, national, local, mm -hmm. feeding into mm -hmm. each other. Yeah. Th these young men, and sometimes these days we are told there are a few women in there as well, yeah. who are macho women yes. <coughs> who are in there. They, they are mobilized from the local front. Exactly. It does appear that their issues are, one, uh, unemployment, mm. two, maybe motivated by their party, mm. Aparashik, mm. or three, that there are some handouts that are given to them, yeah. or four, they want to just foment mayhem. Yeah, yeah. How do we hope to, to put them together, together in a room and tell yeah. them, okay. don't cause us trouble? Yeah. Yeah. So, which is why we adopted this uh, multi-pronged approach, mm -hmm. <coughs> because uh, there's no one-size-fits-all solution right. to the issue of vigilantism. Mm. So in one particular locality, it may feed into existing chieftaincy or mm. ethnic or religious tensions. Disputes, right. mm. In other areas, it may be feeding into some land disputes and etc. Okay. So in most situations, it doesn't sit on its own. Mm. It feeds into existing schisms, mm. fissures in the mm. society. Okay. And that is why we're looking at locality specific mm. solutions okay that's that's and then the national one which is looking at the overarching and saying that okay. look these are the acts i mm. mean this is the act these are the frameworks 
and how do we ensure that? Uh, so you're saying that the solutions are tailor-made for every single corner. Exactly. So you don't just throw something no, out there. Let's exactly. look at inclusivity because I know that Stagana has been very, very interested in mm. persons living with disability, mm. uh, gender issues, yeah. and all of that. Yeah. You have that as part of your uh, election yeah. call. Yes. What are we to expect? We're looking at uh, inclusion, looking at a number of domains. First, I mean, we've always been talking about uh, the inclusion of persons with disability. Mm. So how do we make the processes accessible okay. to persons with disability? Whether we're looking at tactile ballots, mm. whether we're looking at uh, allowing guides okay. to work with uh, the visually impaired mm. to the boots, whether we're looking at physically uh, disabled persons and how they can assess you know, the station, uh, police station stuff. So that's uh, okay. what. We're looking at young people. Mm. In some parts of the country, the voices of young people are not really evident True. in the discourse True. and in the elections. So how True. do we bring young people as very active participants into the process? Mm -hmm. We're looking at people living in um, the deprived areas of this country. Okay. If you take the overseas areas, mm -hmm. if you look at those living in those islands and the uh, Volta, mm -hmm. you know, how do we ensure that they participate equally? So okay. inclusion is looking at disability, okay. youth, mm -hmm. women, mm -hmm. people living in deprived areas and seeing how can we work with the relevant state actors mm. to ensure that they are able to participate effectively. I, I know that in the last election for 2016, Stagana, yeah. for example, was talking about uh, not having uh, voting booths that are too tall yeah. for persons who are in wheelchairs. Exactly. It, do you know if that was implemented and if we're going to continue that? Yes, some of it was implemented. Okay. And we've also started engagements with the Electoral Commission mm -hmm. around this. I think they already have their programs around this, but we just want to feed into that okay. and work with the disability movements to ensure that uh, everybody mm. who is entitled to vote okay. is able to vote, okay. but also able to assess the information mm. that enables them to make an informed decision. Okay. So it's not just about a tactile ballot or making sure that the police that station is accessible to right. but that they also have access to the information. Okay, which, which will bring us to yeah. your intention to influence the manifesto and get yes. the people to be included, exactly. the debates and all of that. Exactly. The NCC, for example, is tasked to organize constituency debates. Here yeah. at the Election Command Center, TV3, yeah. we do a lot of that as exactly. well, because yeah. community debates. Yeah. What do you want to see change about this, which would influence the manifestos, yeah. policy formulation, yeah. and the debates. Okay. Manifesto is influenced at a number of levels, again, at the local mm. and at the national. At the national, we are working in partnership with um, NCC mm. and GBC okay. to look at um, continuing the uh, 2016 practice of the presidential encounters, okay. where each of the presidential candidates had the opportunity to meet citizens mm. and respond to their questions. Right. We also explored the possibility of the presidential debates, mm. and those are still under discussion, so I don't want to okay. talk much right. about that. Mm. But then we we're also working with TV3, for mm. example, to look at how it can bring what it found during the mission okay. uh, Ghana right. program okay. and feed that into the conversations. Okay. That these are the realities of people mm. living in the rural areas. How do we ensure that the manifestos and discussions respond to this? Mm. So that's at the national level. At the local level, we're looking at engagements between citizens and the parliamentary candidates. Okay. So some parliamentary debates and et cetera. Mm. But we're also working with a number of interest groups to begin engaging with the parties. Mm -hmm. So for example, um, we're working with the Private Enterprise Federation okay. to engage with the political parties mm. on their manifestos around private sector mm -hmm. development. Mm -hmm. We're looking at uh, working with the disability movement to engage with the parties mm -hmm. on their manifestos around inclusion. Okay. We look working with Abantu, for example, looking at the part, uh, manifestos mm -hmm. around women and women's rights. Okay. So we're looking at influencing the manifestos at all those uh, levels. Yes. We, we can't downplay your, your relationship with the mm. media, especially uh, TV3 and yeah. uh, media general, if you yeah. will, yeah. the work we do in the hinterland. Yes. But how, we, how are you roping in civil society organizations? Those who have a stake, they are organizing mm. press conferences mm. here, mm. they are organizing mm. fora here mm. for people. Yeah. How do you bring everybody under one umbrella so that our voice exactly. sounds the same? Yes, yes. yes. Um, I think we have been working around what we call the clusters. Mm. So we have clusters of organizations including media, including civil society organizations, okay. working on inclusion, mm. clusters working on uh, good governance. Okay. And so we want to use these clusters as ways of joining the actions. Mm. Because 
we might focus on just the local mm -hmm. and forget that you know if you don't influence the national yeah nothing happens at the local right. and i remember in 2016 when we we're doing this uh, campaign around peaceful elections a young man in one of the communities told me that look the billboards the etc that you are putting up mm -hmm. they are nice but unless you talk to those who are our leaders mm -hmm. We at the local level, if they tell us to move, we'll move. Okay. You know, okay. okay. So that was uh, so which meant that yes, you can do all the beautiful projects at the local level, mm -hmm. but if you don't target the key people. Okay. The deep voices that make the exactly, decisions. Exactly. Nothing happens, which okay. is why we're talking about the national and the local levels mm -hmm. of our election call. It must come at uh, a cost uh, of an arm and a leg. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you sourcing funding from? Well, currently we are funded by Danida, that's the Danish government, mm -hmm. European Union, and the DFID, that's okay. the uh, UK government. Okay. Um, so we implement the cost, the total budget for the election call is approximately 40 million Ghana cities. Okay. That's but huge. That is huge. But as you know, Star Ghana has transitioned to become an independent national organization. Right. Um, able to resource, I mean, mobilize funding to support mm -hmm. our uh, action on our national issues. Okay. So increasingly, we would also have to be looking internally mm. how, if we Ghanaians value credible and peaceful elections, then we must be willing to support actions around that. Mm. So we would be working with others to see how we can mobilize resources locally mm. to support it because we can't continue to count on the fact that our donor partners would be willing to put in money in such the, the, the parties are uh, in the process of putting together their manifestos. Yes. I mean, the MPP, for example, will do uh, host the uh, primaries for 169 yeah. uh, MPs in mm. constituencies where they have certain MPs. Yeah. So in the run-up to building the manifestos, you yeah. say you're going to be engaging them. Exactly. But then on the reverse, there's also the phenomenon that people don't look at manifestos to vote, they look at party mm. colors, they look yeah. at how fine the candidate is, you yeah. know, whether it's a male or a female, yeah. Yeah. what they can receive from yes. this candidate. Yes. Yes. How, how do you intend to solve that as part of election call? Well, I think um, it may not be exactly true that people don't listen to manifestos. Mm. You know, mm. sometimes some manifestos just stand out okay. and catch the eye. Mm. And, you know, people say, well, this is something that I would want to vote for, okay. you know, and there are examples that we can talk about. We need to move a lot more towards that. Mm. But I think we've also seen a phenomenon of manifestos being translated straight into programs right. by the parties. So mm. if you look at free SHS, free SHS. Mm. one district, one, one, factory. Uh, uh, one village, one dam, yeah. and et cetera, et cetera. So uh, even if we don't vote on the basis of the manifestos, but that is increasingly becoming the way in which we are governed. Mm. And so it is quite important that we influence what goes in there. Okay. Especially if the governments are saying that it's not in my manifesto, so I'm not going to do it. Mm. Then we have to ensure that those things are in the manifestos. Well, all of this, uh, and maybe uh, this is a tricky one, mm. all of this beautiful concept, you yeah. know, inclusivity, gender, mm. manifesto, influence, everything else, will come down to uh, the basic of uh, clean, credible elections. Yes. And then the conversation about the register comes in. Exactly. At where the parties... Uh, don't agree. Yes. One says we want it, the other says we, we don't, don't want it, and yeah. they are formed coalitions. Yes. That should be of concern to the election call of Star Ghana Foundation. Mm. What do you say? Well, we are not directly engaging on the register. Why not? One, because at the time that we put out the call, you know, this hadn't come up or okay. it hadn't become the, the okay. issue that it is now. But secondly, we also do know that some civil society organizations are engaging on these processes. Mm. We have also met with the Electoral Commission, for example, to find out what is it that we can do that would help to connect the Electoral Commission mm -hmm. more effectively with civil society and okay. civil society okay. actions. And uh, as you see, uh, <laughs> so we, with that pot of money that we have, mm -hmm. um, we've decided to apply it to uh, peaceful elections, okay. inclusion, Mm. and uh, issues-based campaigning. Okay. Uh, and we are sure that others too would be working directly on the register. But mm -hmm. we're actually working with two national level think tanks okay. around the monitoring of the registration okay. and the verification. Okay. So whilst we are not taking a position directly on whether we should have a register or not, or not. but we would have organizations that will be monitoring. To keep an eye on it. Exactly. Mm. And then feeding back on them. Um, 
their assessments. Okay, two yeah. things uh, as we wrap up the conversation. Yeah. There is uh, a political activist who is watching right okay. now, a young okay. political activist yeah. who is listening to your talk about vigilantism, about inclusivity, about uh, everything else. Yeah. Top three things you'd want to say to them. That's your camera. Okay, so I think the top three things, one is that um, no party is worth your life. That you do have a lot more to contribute to Ghana than true violence. The second is to be active in the campaign. Active, being active doesn't mean that you go and then create trouble. Mm -hmm. But being active means you participate, you educate, and of course you will ensure that the writing is done. Mm -hmm. And the third thing is that we look forward to the young people being a part of the development of this country, pushing the country to I thank you, sir. Thank you, Amidu. Grateful for your time. Yeah, my pleasure. He's the executive director of Star Ghana Foundation. So you know, no party is worth your life. Keep it intact and be a good citizen. Let's all ensure that we have a peaceful, credible election in 2020.